Hi, my name is Herbert Blesser from DreamChip, and today I would like to talk about CDC sign of flow with DFT logic. So in general, we all know that uh, CDC analysis is quite important. Everybody does this on RTL. And from my personal experience, I can say that uh, CDC analysis of TFT logic is often neglected or skipped. And uh, the root cause for that is that uh, DFT is usually inserted at netlist level. So if we do CDC sign off on RTL level, it's assumed that, uh, that CDC will also work for post DFT, but in the end, this is an assumption. So um, another potential root cause for that can be that uh, the uh, DFT is not run straightforward. So we have uh, scripts that are securities and cannot be reused out of the box. And of course, CDC debugging on netlist is painful and high, high, high effort. So uh, we did that in the end, and uh, we have solu a solution for that. There are three main points that make life easy for us and which support a CDC analysis of DFT logic. Point one, <clears throat> we do DFT insertion on RTL level. So of course, this is easier debugging, easier simulating compared to Netlist, and the DFT insertion is already prepared in RTL. We also use standardized naming style of DFT signals and modules and so on. So the CDC debugging and automated CDC path waving by tickle scripts is supported here. Also, we do minimum hierarchy changes for DFT. The second point is we use our so-called SOC lib, which is a company internal library of modules and cells. And these library elements have integrated prepared DFT logic. And this looks like that, that the inputs of this these DFT elements are tied and the, these DFT elements are connected in the DFT insertion. And also we implement CDCs by SOC elements. This of course makes um, yeah, automated CDC path framing, waving and tickle scripts easy. The third point is we use a generic clock and reset unit approach. This means that the CRU implementation mainly uses SOC elements. So the DFT insertion is already prepared in RTL. I would like to show you three examples how DFT logic can change or add new CDC paths. This example is about an interface block, which has a FIFO inside, which uses a dual port RAM. So we have two clocks here, clock A and clock B. And here we see the already prepared DFT logic, which is tied to zero here. After DFT insertion, it looks like that. <clears throat> we have this additional DFT logic here that controls this clock max. So in the end for scan mode and for MBIS mode, we only need one clock here. And this is done by this uh, clock multiplexer. So in case we have scan enabled or MBIS en enabled, we only have one clock. And what we see here is that the old CDC path, which is from here to there is kept and we get an additional path, which is from here to there is added by DFT. Next example is about security. So this is quite simple and straightforward security. We see here the logic for disabling the JTAG. So here we have a JTAG interface and a multiplexer that can disable this interface. <clears throat> this, the select of the multiplexer is driven by this flip-flop, which has a, a prepared DFT logic on the D input here. And after DFT insertion, it looks like that. The select of this multiplexer here is connected now to the DFT logic. And also this EFOS box was added by DFT. So in the end, we, we want to copy the content of the EFUSE box to this flop to disable, in case we want that, the, the JTAG. And of course the copy process takes some clock cycles and to make sure that in, this, in these clock cycles, 
there is no scan attack then we have this um this multiplexer here so in the end a hacker could do a scan attack which would be enabling the scan mode and try to shift in here a zero so this would disable the jtag but if we go to scan mode then only once can be shifted in that flop and in that way the uh, the security gap is closed here by dft next example here we see the dft control of the clock and reset unit so we have we have here a clock divider which has a configurable um, divider which is set by this register the register runs on a different clock domain than the clock divider of course so we need some synchronization here in in between um, in normal functionality after dft insertion it looks like that this um, dft element is connected now to a tdr so we can control if we want to use the normal functional um, configuration value here or if we want to configure by a tdr and you see here here's no synchronizer this is wanted because in normal functionality we want to change the divider on the fly with an ongoing clock and in dft mode we don't need that so in dft mode we first set the system which is here on the on the right side to reset then we configure the the divider here and then we really releases uh, the reset of the system and the signals are stable so we don't need that synchronizer and in, in general this is uh, quite often done for dft so we don't need to ha always have here a synchronizer in um, in dft cdcs and that's why um yeah analyzing cdc path of dft logic is a little bit more uh, difficult than uh, normal functionality cdcs because for normal functional cdcs you usually have the synchronizer module here on this slide um, the, you see a cdcs in rtl without dft compared versus cdcs in rtl with dft the white circles stand for CDCs in RTL without DFT, and the blue circle stands for CDCs inserted by DFT. And if we now run as first step CDC analysis on RTL without DFT, then all of these white circles here are, term, are removed. And then we use this grid that remove these white circles or bubbles here for the next next run with rtl um with dft <clears throat> then we will uh, only get these blue ones here so in that way we have yeah quite simply separated the the white ones to the blue ones and we want that because the white ones are reviewed by a module expert and the blue ones are reviewed by a DFT expert. And usually these, these are two different persons and the module expert does not want to be annoyed by the DFT stuff. And the DFT expert does not want to be annoyed by module stuff. So it makes sense to yeah, automatically have this separated. And what comes for free is that in case, for example, this white circle here was removed by, by a wrong DFT insertion, <clears throat> Uh, then our CDC tool with point us directly to that because yeah this path here is missing. So then this indicates um, yeah something went wrong here and it's quite obvious that um, there must be something fixed here because from our experience usually DFT only adds here CDC path and never removes CDC path of normal functional logic. Here you can see the Dreamchip CDC verification flow. So we start here uh, the CDC tool, and then we get errors and warnings, which we debug. And then we need to decide this is, um, this is okay, this is wanted. Then we refine these paths. And if this is an issue or not wanted, then we fix this in RTL. And then we restart that loop again again run the tool do again the debugging and so on so this is um, done in several iterations and uh, at the end of the of this loop um, no error and no warning should be left and then we do the sign off which is done by reviewing 
all of these waivers, which are done here by the module expert. <clears throat> After that, we do CDC analysis of RTL with DFT. We restart this, the old scripts, which we have from here as the start point. And then we get um, errors and warnings, which are only related to DFT. Then again, we do uh, debugging and decide this is okay, or this is not okay. If it's okay, we waive that. If it's not okay, we fix that. Go through that loop till no issue is left anymore. And then we do a sign off by reviewing the waivers by a DFT expert. I would like to yeah, present you some numbers. So we did the CDC sign off flow with DFT logic in reality on two designs. Design one is the initial product SOC and design two is the derivative of that. Some numbers, so the gate count of this SOC chip was roughly 15 million gates. We had roughly 20 clocks coming out of the CRU. In fact, in the end, on, for synthesis, there are much more clocks and uh, roughly 300 ROMs, one boot ROM. For the initial SOC, we needed two weeks. And for the derivative, of course, only two days. This is uh, not that much effort. Uh, we found with the CDC tools, two um, uh, CDC issues, which could be fixed. One is a mix up in the synchronizer clock domain. And the other one was an enable of the clock gate, which was driven by non-registered non logic. And yeah, the CDC results on logic of uh, with DFT. There we found one issue, which was an CDC error in a DFT interface bridge. This was a quite tricky one. So in the end, um, a CDC analysis of DFT logic is possible and we did it. Thank you.